Spiral is a 2019 film directed by Davis Curtis Harder. Um, now, he's done some other movies that I personally have not seen, but I've been saying I'm going to get around to watching for like a year now. Um, well, maybe that's an exaggeration, but this year. Um, he's done one called, I think, What Keeps You Alive, and the one that I've really been meaning to check out called Harpoon. Um, which I've heard sort of mixed reviews about but um, he's definitely churning them out and I think he's he's maybe 26 so he's doing pretty good for himself and um, he's really getting a lot of these movies out um, fairly recently actually the he seems to have um, done quite a few so first off the bat that's very impressive Unfortunately, this film just left me asking, like, why to a lot of different um, situations. They, I don't think they were um, properly answered, or I don't think the motivation behind some things was established. Um, I'm going to give some brief spoilers here because I do want to just mention the details that I'm talking about and I can't really do that when being so vague. So the man on the bridge, um, the boy seems generally worried and scared and he's like okay I think we need to get out of here. Um, okay first off they never ever call back to who that man was, what he was doing, why he was coming after them, was he one of the neighbours? If so, what was his purpose for being there? Um, was he trying to intimidate them? What? <laughs> and also, we learn that the son is actually part of this whole like cult of... If he's put so much effort into developing a relationship with the daughter in order to sort of suck her in, um, why does he sort of halfway through the film then just abandon her and we see him off with another girl? Um, maybe that's his real girlfriend and she's in the cult. That would make more sense, but they never address it. Even the girl, the daughter never addresses it with him. So I, I thought that those things needed um, some more answers. So I kind of saw this coming quite early on. I think they were a bit heavy handed with it, but I'm talking about when he goes crazy. Um, obviously they were dropping in the hints. Um, there were like time lapses or he'd walk into a room and someone would suddenly move position and he'd be like, oh, and um, they never fully address that. I assume maybe it's part of actually these cult members um, maybe having powers um, and being able to sort of be everywhere or get somewhere really quickly. Um, but we do also see that he is, they briefly mention um, something like he, they've tampered with his medication or that it's gone, I can't quite remember. But, um, so he obviously is kind of going a bit crazy or suffering the effects of not having his medication. I don't think they ever actually say what the medication is or what it is specifically for. So that's a bit of a misstep as well. I think they could have explained that a bit better so we knew exactly what the implications of him being off his meds would mean. Um, so I think they were trying to do sort of an unreliable narrator thing, but um, for me it was pretty heavy handed and it didn't really work. I think it needed way more of a setup as well um, with the whole medication because um, they sort of just dump it in towards the end like, oh, um, I see you've not been taking your medication, or like he pulls out the pills and I think... <sighs> they probably should have um, drawn a bit more attention to that right at the beginning. So it could be a bit subtler when they actually do bring it up at the end or in the middle, whatever. Um, 
and obviously the scenes where we flashback and we're, you know, um, we find out they were attacked, him and his um, boyfriend, I guess, when they were sort of teenagers. Um, and we find out that his boyfriend was actually killed by the attackers and this is something that I did see coming unfortunately. So when they were doing the whole, um, he, was, he was like, oh you need to call, I can't remember his name, Eric, oh you need to call Eric, um, he'll tell you the truth and you know the whole reveal that Eric was dead all along, yeah I saw that coming so I, I thought that was kind of heavy-handed as well. Um, it also just went nowhere. So he, Eric is dead and, you know, I, it's supposed to make us think this guy's crazy maybe. Um, is he crazy? Because he seemed to forget that, he, you know, is he forgetting this because he's off his medication? Is, is he generally like hallucinating? He's been speaking to his ex on the phone. They never really clear it up. Um, and it, it, it turns out to not mean anything to the plot, except that maybe he's crazy. And then two seconds later, we find out that no, he's not crazy. There is a cult, except he might be crazy because he's imagining speaking to his dead boyfriend. So the ending was a bit silly for me um, and I thought that it relied on a lot of conveniences. Was there a plan to drive him crazy? They obviously messed with his medication. Um, but did they know that he was going to take a gun and shoot this guy in the middle of a party? Probably not. And that he'd get put in jail? Who knows? Um, that seems like a pretty convenient plan for that to work out. So I didn't find the ending to be particularly smart, clever, um, to really call back on anything they'd set up during the first half of the film. Um, so that was a bit disappointing for me. It just, it did really fall apart in the end. Um, the only thing I probably enjoyed of the ending was the scene when the dad walks into the daughter's bedroom and just finds out that she's been totally like had her insides eaten out uh, by the neighbor's son. So I, I have to say I wasn't expecting that because you know he he was saying oh, I've got to save the daughter even more so than his husband. Um, so I was not expecting the daughter to already have had her heart eaten out. That was great. Okay, something actually that just popped into my head um, regarding the daughter is when they're all sitting around and it turns out that her, her dad and her dad's, her new stepfather are all discussing how they lost their virginity. And when I realized what was going on, I was like, uh, like that is not something I would ever want to be part of with my father and new stepfather or stepmother, whatever. So I think that was the most disturbing part of this whole movie, to be honest with you. That was the scariest scene. Overall, I would say this was a decent film. Um, it was well made. I just think that the story was a bit of like a hodgepodge. Like it felt like it was rushed and they hadn't spent time ironing out all the details and the motivations. Um, so some stuff just sort of led nowhere or and then some stuff at the end came out of nowhere. I don't think it was properly timed out well um, or structured well but you could see that the base was there for a, a good story um, albeit not extremely original except obviously the sort of the angle that this was like a gay couple 
um, and then at the end they are um, they have like a an Asian couple moving in so like a family actually and it's, they're kind of saying you know that they prey on these people who um, certain people are still afraid of and you know so I get what they were trying to go for um, for me that was the, like that explanation and the end was a bit cheesy like I would have I would have liked that theme but to be addressed in a more gentle delicate way um, maybe not so on the nose as that they literally gave the exposition at the end that you know this is what is happening and it's a bit oh. but anyway yeah I've rambled for way longer than I expected to on this one um, I would give this a 5 or 6 out of 10 I didn't enjoy it very much after about halfway through except for the a few creepy scenes um, I will give it a 5 out of 10 I think which is an average grade and I'm also going to go and watch Harpoon at some point um, so yeah but I'm looking forward to seeing um, what this director does in the future and he's obviously he's still young um, and I think he's probably going to come out with some pretty cool little horror films Thanks.